part of your lab work is to identify cells in different stages of cell cycle. So let's see some of the photographs of the cell cycle uh, so that you will have no difficulty identifying cells in different stages. Inner phase, during S phase or G phase, G1 or G2, the cells look about the same. So which is basically you have the nuclear membrane, you have the nucleolus, and there's nothing really that dramatically different about these cells, whether they're in S, G1 or G2. So once the mitosis start, we know things change. So let's see. The first stage of mitosis, prophase, this is the beginning of mitosis. So the individual chromatids become visible. The microtubules form between each pole and the chromosomes to make up a spindle. So here you can see there is a cell in prometaphase. You can see the chromosomes have started to condense. You can see these linear structures here. These are basically these squiggly lines are basically the chromosomes not visible here. The centrosome will start divides. We know that centrosomes start going towards the opposite ends in a, in a cell and they also have these microtubules emanating from them and these microtubules basically form the spindle which basically holds the whole structure of mitotic apparatus together. The next stage is prometaphase. It is marked by disappearance of the nuclear envelope. Here it is depicted in this figure. For example, the nuclear envelope starts to break down. And of course, you, we know that it will completely disintegrate. The kinetochores, the regions of chromosomes where microtubules attach, they start to form. And the spindle microtubules, these kinetochore microtubules, they start to attach to the kinetochore. And the, of course, that would result in a movement of the poles and of also, of course, the chromosomes which are present inside the cell. The next stage is metaphase. All the centromeres have arrived at the equatorial plate, which is basically in the middle of the cell. Here you have the equatorial plate. The chromosomes arrive here and they are uh, in metaphase. Also, I should mention that it is the best time to see the sizes and shapes of the chromosomes because now they're maximally condensed. So this is the hallmark feature of metaphase that chromosomes are lined up. Here you can see in the, this figure also the chromosomes are lined up at the equatorial plate. The next stage is anaphase. In anaphase, separation of the chromosome basically marks the beginning of anaphase during which the two sister chromatids move to opposite ends of the spindle. So here you can see uh, in previous figure you saw the chromosomes had lined up in exactly in the middle of this spindle. Now the chromosomes have started to move towards the opposite poles. We know that the daughter uh, chromosomes, th these are basically the daughter chromosomes, they are moving towards the opposite ends of the pole. So each now chromatid contains one double-stranded DNA and now it is referred to as the daughter chromosome and ultimately of course we'll see in the next stage there will be furrow forming and that will basically result in splitting of this cell. So let's look at telophase. Here you can see chromosomes have arrived at the poles. Now the next stage the cytokinesis division of the two cells that has also started basically you can see this furrow forming in animal cells we talked about that basically their actin and myosin fibers which are present here that will start to constrict and it will result in separation of these two cells but here we will talk about that on the next slide but here I want to mention that chromosomes now start to begin to uncoil and also the nuclear envelope starts to reform and these also the nucleoli they also start to form so this is basically the telophase. So now we have completed mitosis. Now we, we can go on to the cytokinesis, which is basically splitting of one cell into two cells. In animals, of course, we know it is done by furrowing of the plasma membrane. And the analogy which is given to describe this process is basically, if you think about a ball of dough and you run a string around it and then pull on the string, it will basically splice the uh, the ball of dough into two. So this is basically a gross analogy of uh, how the cells split into two. In lab, you will be shown different 
uh, slides and you'll be asked to identify different phases of cell division on that slide. 